Hello everyone, so if we look at all these equations on the left hand side, if you had to solve them, you would typically just move all the x's to the one side, all the numbers to the other side. We know how to do this, we've been doing this since like grade 7. The same with this one over here, you would move all the x's to the one side. Um, even this one would work out because you would move the x squared over and so what you would end up with is x squared minus x squared plus 3x equals to 7 and so the x squareds would cancel out and so we would end up with the normal 3x equals to 7. So that's how you solve those ones. You take all the x's to the one side and all the numbers to the other side. But if the x squares do not cancel out. You see here we've got an x squared that is not going to cancel out. Same with this one, it will never cancel out. And same with this one, it's not going to cancel out because if you had to bring everything over, or the x is over, the x squared would still be there. So as soon as you end up with something like an x squared or an x3, then you have to solve these equations in a totally different way. And that is what I'm going to be explaining in this lesson. So here's the first one that we're going to try. So if I had to bring the x's to the one side, which they already are, this x squared is not going to cancel. If this happens, then you, got to have, you have to do the following. You bring everything over to the one side and you make the other side equal to zero. Guys, this is so important. You want the zero on the one side. You never want to end up in a situation like this. You always want to bring it over to the left and then make the one side equal to zero. Or you can take everything to the right. It doesn't matter, but you need the zero. Your, what you then do is factorize. If you can get this right, guys, you're going to get a lot of marks. Factorize. Okay, so I know how to factorize. I mean, we did a whole chapter on factorizing. I can clearly see that this is a trinomial. So I know that I look at the number 4. Guys, if you can't remember factorizing, then you need to go watch that and just recap. The number 4 is the same as 4 times 1 or 2 times 2. I know that a 4 and a 1 could help me make minus 3 by saying minus 4 plus 1. So we open up two brackets and we say x, x minus 4 plus 1. But now we also have to say equals to 0. So this is slightly different to when we did factorizing because now we're doing factorizing with equations. Okay, so when you have these brackets like this, you then say x minus 4 must be equal to 0 or x plus 1 must be equal to 0. And then you solve each one of these separately. Now you guys know how to solve these ones. These are the ones that we've been doing in the last couple of lessons. So you just take the 4 over and so x will be equal to 4 or x will be equal to, and then you take this over, minus 1. So we got two answers. That is because of this. That tells you how many answers you will get. So if I give you a question like this, this one does not have any x squares and so we treat this the normal way. So I'm going to take the x's to the one side and the numbers to the other side. And so that will become 3x minus 4x equals to 2 and then this minus 8 will go over and become plus 8. So 3x minus 4x is minus 1x equals to 10. I then divide both sides by minus 1 and so x is negative 10. Okay, but if there was an x squares, x squared, not x squares, if there was an x squared that didn't cancel out, then you do the method that I showed you just now, where you take everything to the one side, and then you make the other side equal to zero. So let's practice. So here's an x squared that is not going to cancel, so you factorize. What type of factorizing is this? Oh, this is a trinomial. So we look at the number 10, and we know that 10 is 5 times 2, or you could say 10 times 1, but I know that a 5 and a 2 can make minus 7 by saying minus 5 minus 2. So then I open up two brackets and I say x and x minus 5 minus 2. Now normally, if this was the, f the chapter on factorizing, you wouldn't have an equal to 0 sign and so you would stop over there. 
but now that we have it equal to 0 we go one step further and so we say x minus 5 is equal to 0 or x minus 2 is equal to 0 and then you solve each one of those separately so this minus 5 you could take it to that side so x will be equal to 5 or x will be equal to 2 so you end up with two answers because of that so here we have a x squared that's not going to cancel so we factorize but Kevin this isn't a trinomial no one said it had to be guys you have to factorize so this is your uh, difference of squares where you've got two terms separated with a minus and each one is a perfect square x times x gives you x squared and 5 times 5 gives you 5 so you open up two brackets x and x 5 and 5 and then remember your difference of squares are the ones that have a plus and a minus now at this step you would say so x plus 5 must equal to 0 or x minus 5 equals to 0 and so if you solve this one you're going to get x equals to minus 5 or then if you take this minus over x equals to 5 alright so what type of factorizing is this it's not a difference of square although it has two terms separated with a minus this is not a perfect square it's not a trinomial because that's three terms it's not a grouping because that's four terms so then it's the most simple type that you should always try first and that's common factor so I know that there's a x square here and a x here so I can take out x and then I'd be left with x minus 5 and so at this step I just take this part and I say x equals to 0 or x minus 5 equals to 0 this one is already solved and then this one will become x equals to 5 so there I get my two answers here I don't have any x squares so I use the old method where I take all the x's to the one side and all the numbers to the other side so I'll end up with x minus 2x equals to minus 8 minus 4 and so x minus 2x is minus x minus 8 minus 4 is minus 12 I then divide both sides by minus 1 and so we end up with x equals to 12 here I, here I have a x squared that does not cancel out so I must take everything to the one side that is very important became a minus 20 when you move it that side and then I see that this is a trinomial so I look at the 20 and I know that that's 20 times 1 10 times 2 or 5 times 4 20 and 1 could make minus 19 by saying minus 20 plus 1 so we then open up two brackets x and x minus 20 and plus 1 I don't stop there though I then say x minus 20 equals 0 or x plus 1 equals 0 I then solve this so I take the minus 20 over so x is equal to 20 or x is equal to minus 1 this one has an x3 so that means we're going to end up with three answers so there's not much we can do here except for taking out an x so you can take out one x and then you're left with x squared minus 3x minus 4 now this part is a trinomial so we know that 4 let, let's do that one as a side calculation over here we know that 4 is the same as 4 times 1 or 2 times 2 4 and 1 can make minus 3 by saying minus 4 plus 1 so I open up two brackets x x minus 4 plus 1 okay so that entire bracket becomes x minus 4 and x plus 1 and then that's all equal to 0 great so at this step I can say x is equal to 0 or x minus 4 is equal to 0 or x plus 1 is equal to 0 I then solve this one is already solved so that's your first answer or this one if you solve it you would take the minus 4 over and so you'd end up with x is equal to 4 or you could take this one over and it'll become x is equal to negative 1 and so that's all for this lesson guys thank you for watching